Okay guys, put out a good plan. Pink trigger spoon, stop. 12 inches deep, I'm probably. I'm gonna turn this a little bit. Um, it's probably gonna get tangled in everything. That's what I'm shooting for. He is for. putting up a tip. He is putting up a fight. Why should be eight inches long? You don't, <laughs> no. I, I, I saw eight inches long fish that, that fish, before I got the ride out of the holder, he was just, the drag was just singing, so. We'll see. It was dancing though. I think you could come over the top of that. Nope, go out again. There you go. Perfect. Groovy. Where is he at? He's, he's over here. Oh, he's, he's all over the place. Side. Trying to see. He's under this one. Come over the here. Go through there. Keep reeling. Keep it tight. Come over under. Come over and under. Go right over there. Oh, I'm going behind you. I'm going to like. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch you. We're in. Tell me if I'm going to hit anything with the boat. He's on that line. Yeah, we'll ignore it. We'll ignore it. Oh, I just, it's another uh, lightning. It is. Keep doing what you're doing. It's a big fish. Take your time. He's got him hooked real good. So it's real good. He inhaled that pink spoon. Okay, start reeling on the lead core. There you go. Wrapped it. There you go. That's fine. Way to go, big Al. Good is. job. There you go. That's why we have the long neck. <laughs> yeah. That's a heavy one. That's a big fish. Look at that big old lightning trout, guys. That is, I don't know, I'm guesstimating. It's six pounds, I'm gonna That's say. That's what I would say. A big old goldfish right there. He's gonna be yeah. pink inside, great to eat. Pink trigger spoon, six inches deep, probably. Maybe 50 feet back, so awesome fish. That's how we do it. Quick, guys. Yep. See, there, there's what we got that fish on, just a standard pink trigger spoon. Top lines, no weight, no nothing. Eight pound test fluorocarbon leader. Super simple, it worked. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. I am back to talk more about trout spoons. Um, as I said in my last video, I've had a lot of questions from the community out there about how to use trout spoons, when to use them, how to rig them, what colors to use, stuff like that. In my last video, I talked about my, my basic kind of global spoon trolling philosophy and where they fit into my trout fishing arsenal. If you didn't see that video, I'll put a link down below. Check that video out and then watch this video and I'm gonna make a following video about color. So we're gonna have a three video series here all about trout spoons. So without further ado, um, last time I talked about how they fit into my, my basic scheme of things. Today, I'm gonna talk about exactly how I rig spoons and how I use them out on the water. So let's jump into it. What I've got here, I've got one of my standard Kel Kellogg top lining slash downrigger rods, um, Abu Garcia 5600 LC reel. Um, this one here, I haven't filled with braid yet. It is still filled up with eight pound test fluorocarbon line. When this line wears out, I will fill it up with about 20 pound braid. I will put about a 20 or 30 foot copolymer monofilament top shot on it. And every rod in my arsenal is rigged the same way. Now, if you watch the channel a lot, you've undoubtedly seen this, this demonstration or discussion before, but we're gonna talk about it again. Main line right here, okay? Main line comes down, goes through a bead. Attached to the main line is a multi-joint trolling swivel right there to prevent line twist. The last thing I want to do is have twists from the lure or a dodger or a fish or whatever transmitted to my line because line twist sucks and it can ruin your day. So I do everything in my power to prevent line twist. Guys always ask me, what is the bead for? And you know, Sometimes the bead can prevent a piece of grass from going down your line, working its way down and getting on the lure. But that's not really what it's for. What this is really for is for, for periods in the day when I'm in the back of the boat. Remember, I'm a full-time trout fishing guy and I'm in the back of the boat. We're fighting a fish and there's glare on the water. That bead often 
will tell me where the fish is in the water because I can see that silhouetted against the water. The other thing that that bead does, and you know, I'm, I take out a lot of youngsters fishing. I, I've got a lot of kids their first trout, and I've got a lot of kids some very nice trout. That bead prevents that trolling swivel from being reeled up into the eye of the rod. Because if you've got a big old trout on, he comes to the boat once and decides to take off. The last thing you want is for that swivel to be in the eye of the rod when he decides to run because it's going to be bye-bye fish. All right. So that's my main line. That's my basic setup. My setup on lead core is identical to that. Okay. All the gear, the leaders, dodgers, flashers, everything runs off of that trolling swivel. Now in this case, I've got my most common rig for spoon trolling. I have a eight pound test fluorocarbon leader right there. I'm gonna lean this rod down here without breaking anything. <laughs> so I have an eight pound test fluorocarbon leader right there. Um, and I come down to a cross lock snap right there. Not a snap swivel, a cross lock snap. This makes changing spoons, uh, ch changing spoons, changing lures a very quick and efficient process. If I want to change colors, change spoons, maybe I want to put on a Rapala or a Maglip, I snap this off, snap it on, I'm ready to go. Okay. Probably, I'm going to say 80% of the time when I'm out trolling spoons, initially when I first put a spoon on, when I'm out searching for fish, I'm going to put that spoon on without any flashers, without any dodgers, okay? All too often, I'll go to a lake and I'll have guys, maybe they talk to me about, you know, what should we be pulling, this and that. They haven't fished the lake before, they haven't fished the lake in a long time, and I look at their rods, and they have every rod rigged up with some sort of spoon, and, you know, 14 inches above that spoon, they have a big six inch dodger. That's all fun and games, if the fish want a spoon behind a dodger but they might not. So I start out with a naked spoon. That does a couple things for me. First and foremost, I can go a lot faster with a spoon, a naked spoon, than I can with a dodger. Even if you're using, you know, the slim profile dodgers, like, like something like this, like one of my six inch fisheye pros, it's gonna limit you to about 2.2 miles an hour, okay? Uh, maybe a little more, but that's about it. That's gonna be your top end speed. Well. With this, with this trigger spoon, I, I might want to go 2.8 miles an hour. I might want to put on a, <clears throat> excuse me, I might want to put on a speed spoon and go three and a half miles an hour. You're not going to accomplish that with a Dodger, okay? So that, that's one thing that, that the Dodger, you know, is, is kind of a negative. The other thing that I'm not crazy about when I'm using a Dodger, sometimes you have to use them or you're not going to get hit. But a Dodger provides a really good medium for the trout to develop slack between the dodger and the trout hooked on the spoon. And whenever trout develop slack, it gives them the advantage in that it makes it easier for them to, you know, head shake and throw the hook. So anytime you have something large in your line between, you know, you and the lure, it is something that the trout can utilize to create slack in the line. And, uh, you know, that just raises the chances or raises the percentage of chances, I guess you'd say, for them shaking that hook. Even with a barbed hook, they can shake that hook. You've seen it. They can flip that hook pretty easily if they get slack. Especially if they get their head out of the water and head shake. Um, they get that, that spoon whipping around and next thing you know, bye-bye fish. So that's kind of my <clears throat> my thoughts about Dodgers. Now, one mistake, I've got something in my throat here. <clears throat> one mistake I see a lot of guys make um, when they're using Dodgers is they, they try to crowd the lure, the spoon, up next to the dodger. That may be important if you're kokanee trolling, but we're not kokanee trolling, we're trout trolling. The spoon has plenty of action on its own. We're not looking for the dodger to impart action to the spoon. We're looking for the dodger to put out flash and vibration, to draw fish within range, and then they mistake the, the impulses of that dodger for a feeding trout. They come within range and they see this shad imitation swimming along. And if they're in a mindset to chase and feed, bam, fish on right there. But this, this spoon doesn't need to be, you know, 14 inches behind that, that dodger. So if we were out, let's say we we're out on Lake Shasta, you and I were out on Lake Shasta and we know it's a shad lake and we see some marks on the sonar or not, but we're in a promising area. 
First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run that shad pattern trigger spoon just like that. This could be a needle fish, could be a humdinger, whatever, um, triple lure. I'm gonna run that spoon naked and I'm gonna give those chance, or those trout rather, a chance to hit it. I'm gonna position that lure above their head in the water column. Um, I'm gonna give them repeated chances to see it and see if they respond. Maybe they don't respond. We didn't get a bite. What do we do now? Well, rather than making a bunch of crazy changes in my spread and stuff like that, I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna try a Dodger. It's great color for Shasta, Folsom, uh, big open water bait fish lakes, a white, white and chrome Dodger, good choice. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna pull this rod back up here without breaking some, right here. I'm gonna go right here like, that's right in front of the camera. I'm gonna go right here like this. Let me get this between my legs here. Here we go. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna open the trolling swivel up, just like that. I'm gonna remove the leader. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna snap that dodger onto the trolling swivel right there. Now I'm just gonna take my leader, which is incidentally probably 40 some inches long. It's a long leader. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna snap that leader on the back of that Dodger, and I'm gonna pair those up. But, because the Dodger needs to be trolled slower than I can go with a naked spoon, I'm gonna have to cut my speed down probably to about two miles an hour. But sometimes that Dodger placed in the line like that, it will draw the fish in, it will draw, you know, lethargic or fish that aren't necessarily active in to check things out. And then they'll see that spoon and they'll pick it off. Um, final word about dodgers and spoons. Because you need to use dodgers doesn't mean, mean you need to use dodgers on every rod in your spread. If you're by yourself, you got a second rod sticker, sometimes a dodger on one rod is enough to create action on both of your rods. Um, if you're fishing with a partner, say you're fishing three or four rods, sometimes a dodger on one rod is enough of a calling card to bring fish in and produce action on all four of your rods. So that's just something to think about. You know, I love Dodgers. So you have to have Dodgers in your arsenal, but you don't want to overuse Dodgers and you don't want to use them as your everyday, you know, approach, your everyday crutch to catch fish. Start out naked and then, you know, deploy Dodgers as you need to based on what the trout are telling you on any given day. Don't get in that, this is the rig I always run rut. I always put on a sling blade and I always run, you know, a needle fish 14 inches behind it because one time I had a really good day on that. Sure you did. It's a great combination sometimes, but it's not a great combination every day. Sometimes a naked needle fish or a naked trigger spoon or a naked Rapala is a better choice than that needlefish teamed with that sling blade dodger. So that's my basic rigging. Um, that's where I would start if I were you. Start naked, then then you know incorporate the dodgers into the spread if you're not getting hit on the naked spoon. I'm out of here for now. If you're looking for any of the tackle I just mentioned, go on up to fhstackle.com. Um, I'm also booking instructional fishing trips out at Folsom Lake as well as kayak trips up at Sugar Pine Reservoir. So if you want to get out on the water with me and learn the finer points of trout fishing firsthand from the water, book a trip. We'll be out there yelling fish on real soon. Anyway, I'm out of here for now. I will be back with the final installment of our three trout spoon videos and uh, in that one we are going to be talking about spoon color i'm kel kellogg i'll catch you next time right here on youtube guys thanks a lot